Hey folks, so let's look at customising some Fujifilm simulations. So film simulations are unique to uh, Fujifilm cameras and they're based on old film stocks and to give you a film-like look from the uh, history of Fujifilm uh, cameras from before digital days. And I'm going to bring up my settings on the uh, screen so you can uh, see them. And then we're going to go through the settings that I've modified and explain to you what they are. And also throughout the actual video, I will bring up various samples on the screen. And also I think in the description below, what I'm going to do is link my uh, blog or a link to some of the actual photographs so you can actually see them more full size because obviously on a YouTube video, the compression can make the grain look not like it's meant to be, shall we say. So um, I'll do that as well. So we're gonna look at the color chrome fact first. And what that does is it affects all the colors in the image apart from the blues. So the reds, the, the greens, and the, for example, and it'll reduce the luminance on them. Um, so that the image uh, can actually look more punchy uh, in those areas. Uh, so the, the idea of using that is that you can kind of saturate different portions of the image um, without affecting the overall look of the film simulation. It's a very subtle uh, change. And there's a couple of settings on that, as you can see, you can have, um, you can ramp it up to a very uh, high setting, or you can just have a sort of a weak setting, which is what I tend to prefer is the sort of small subtle uh, look rather than going full on. Um, because if you put it onto high, it really will um, add to the saturation. But again, your mileage may vary. It's a case of playing around with the setting for the picture you took. And remember, you can do all this in post-processing. You could take a picture on a base classic Chrome image and then you could post-process these settings on to learn how to do your simulation. As the Color Chrome FX Blue, which is the hints in the name, it decreases the luminance on the blue colors only. And again, this can make your skies look really deep blue. So again, you can have the muted colors of classic Chrome, for example, but you could make the sky look a lot more saturated if you wanted to affect just the blues. This is quite good also for documentary photography because um, certainly when I do processing in Lightroom, I tend to accentuate the blues in the image to give the image a cool look, which is quite good for all the greys you tend to get in these, um, these images. And again, you can have weak or strong effect and play around with it and see what uh, it comes out like. Again, it's all about experimenting. Grain's quite interesting. Again, it's like all the other settings. It has a weak setting and a strong setting. And there are two sizes, small grain and large grain. And the idea behind the grain is very, very simple. Most film stocks of the past used to have a grain look to them, a unique look. And essentially, this allows you to add a film-like grain to your JPEG images when they come straight out of camera. Um, and essentially, that's, that's all it's there to do. Now you can add grain in post-processing in many applications if you wish, but the algorithms in the Fujifilm cameras are quite unique. So I think you'll find a hard time matching them. I'm not saying you can't, but it's very hard to match what the camera can produce versus what you can do in software afterwards. It's a very unique look. And again, this is why I'm gonna put the full size images on a link in the description so you can actually look at some of them in detail and see actually what they actually look like rather than just upon the screen. So we're only gonna have a few up on the screen now and again as I'm chatting. So next, I've tweaked the tone curve. Um, and again, the tone curve lets you affect the highlights in the image and of course the shadows in the image. You could bring the shadows up, you could bring the shadows down. So it might be that you've got um, a picture you're taking which has got a lot of highlights in like a cloudy sky. You might want to decrease the highlights a little bit or you might want to um, bring the shadows up because it's a high contrast image. It just lets you change and play around with that to make the image look a bit flatter or to make the image look a little bit more punchy. Um, and it's very similar to, but not as powerful as, uh, the curves feature in um, Lightroom where you can uh, play around with that, not with just, um, you know, the, the, all the different colors RGB you can uh, really, really make a difference and change how an image actually looks by playing with that. That's what I play with a lot in uh, Lightroom to get my sort of street photography, if you like, unique look. I call it, my, I call it cine style. Um, it's a very flat image profile. 
um, where I crush the blacks uh, somewhat and add a little bit of blue in as well. Um, you don't have that fine control in camera, but it gives you a modicum of control if you don't want to mess around with post-processing. Now, color self-explanatory, it's essentially just the saturation. So that setting will just, you, you can either reduce the saturation in an image or you can increase the saturation in the image. And you've seen, obviously, um, by settings that I brought up earlier, and I've put the settings in the description so you can see that I tend to decrease the saturation in this example, but I might choose to increase it in other examples. And again, it lets you play around. Classic Chrome's already quite a fairly desaturated pro like film simulation, but you know, I like to take it down a little bit further. Now, white balance, although you can change this um, in camera, you can see from the white balance uh, settings, and I'll bring that up on the screen. Um, you know, you can make a picture look more magenta, more green, more yellow. Um, I've slightly given this a, a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta into it to give it a slight warm up, uh, but not too much and still give it that bluish tint. Um, now, you can change it in post processing, but essentially the white balance is baked into the image. You've again got to play around with this because white balance will work differently in different lighting conditions. So your mileage may um, vary. Um, but the reason with by setting the white balance rather than having it on auto is that the film simulation is designed to work in sort of pretty much daylight situations outdoors. Um, it will work indoors in daylight. Um, and if I have an auto white balance, it'll kind of look different depending on the way the lighting is, whether it's overcast or it's dark or it's raining or you're indoors or it's nighttime. Um, and you can change that in post-processing when you're using raw images. With a JPEG, there's less scope for playing with that. So be mindful that it's worthwhile baking it in. And again, it's just a case of playing around until you get something that you like because the, it, you're not looking for the right white balance. You're just looking for what you want for your film simulation. And again, you can play around to a certain extent in post-processing in the camera's um, RAW editor. Next, we've got uh, sharpness, um, self-explanatory. If you dial it up, the picture will be sharper, um, especially if there's noise in it, then you'll start to accentuate the noise. So you need to be careful about that. Equally, you can soften the image, and which is what I tend to do when I want to get the, a more film-like look because digital images tend to have a lot more sharpening than film images. So you want to get a more film-like look to your images, soften it up a bit. Next is clarity. It's clarity is a difficult one. It's kind of a bit like contrast. Um, and the fact that you turn it up, you'll get a, a more contrasty image. In a way, it kind of makes the image have a little HDR effect. If you push the clarity right up, or if you push the clarity down, it'll soften. It'll, again, it'll soften the image right down. It'll reduce the contrast between the darks and the uh, the light. So it's kind of like a contrast. And I like to, again, if I want to get that film-like look, I'll just gently reduce the clarity just a tad. Now, bear in mind that when you're playing with clarity, there'll be a significant delay when you press the shutter button because the camera has to process the JPEG. It's a very processor-intensive task. So don't be alarmed when you press the shutter if your camera goes, oh, what's it doing? It just takes it a little bit longer so you won't be able to find burst shots and things off when you're doing the clarity. That's why sometimes it's best to take a normal image. And as I say, I might do another video on this. Um, play around in the camera's um, like little raw studio where it can convert an image to whatever you want. In fact, there is some Fujifilm software to do that as well. That could be another video. And lastly, we've got the dynamic range setting. And again, I tend to shoot in DR400 because um, JPEGs have less dynamic range than raw files. So I want to maximize as much dynamic range as I can between the highlights and the shadows. So I always set that to DR400. And it means I have to shoot at ISO 640. So again, in bright conditions, if you can't get the shutter speed high enough, you may need to use an ND filter. Um, but generally, if you use an electronic shutter and it's a static subject, you can go up to 1 32,000th of a second on most Fujifilm cameras. I just wanted to point out that these film simulations that I've gone through are designed for the X-Trans 4 sensor. On an older Fujifilm camera, your mileage may vary. Some of these settings may not exist and they're all different. The XS10 has the, the most advanced, if you like, menus and profile menus for setting things up. The other cameras, even the XT4, are a little bit behind, but do have all these settings in there. So I hope you like the images. As I say, go to the description below and I'll put all the details of the what settings I chose. Have a play around with the simulation. See if you like the one I've done. Create your own. Um, and uh, generally, have a play around and have a bit of fun with it. 
Um, one thing you've got to be mindful of when you're doing in-camera JPEGs, and I've put some pictures on there that are high contrast, is that um, one of the one, a picture of my cat, um, the, she was underexposed, so I've, the only thing I did in post-processing is brighten up the shadows. I haven't changed anything else. And the reason behind that is you can't really do that in post, not post-processing, you can't do that in camera to the extent you can in post-processing. Normally in a situation like that, you would use a flash uh, to illuminate the foreground subject so that you could correctly expose the background. So be mindful of that there are limitations to JPEGs straight out of camera and that if you're shooting a situation where it is a high contrast, is up, you want to expose the background and the foreground and the background's very bright and the foreground's you know not as lit, you've got to be mindful that you're not always going to expose it correctly and it's difficult to get that right and you've just got to play around with the lighting conditions and use the natural light around you. You can use the pop-up flash on your camera uh, with the power dial down, but going into flash is a whole nother story. So, you know, don't be disappointed if you, your picture comes out and goes, oh, it's a JPEG and I've got like the, the image that I took the picture of is dark or the, or the background's blown out. That's because cameras don't yet have what your mobile phone does computational photography, which can really take several pictures very quickly without you knowing, combine them and make the picture look beautifully exposed every time. Digital cameras don't have that yet. I'm sure it's coming in future cameras. So that's where you've got to start using things like flashes and lighting to light up your foreground subject or very cleverly use your natural light from the outside and taking the picture. It, it's all the skill of learning photography, you see. So play around, experiment and see what you can produce out of your camera without doing post-processing or much post-processing. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed that uh, video and on uh, classic Chrome and uh, film simulations. And I hope it gave you a bit of an insight into setting that up on your Fujifilm camera. Have a play around. I'll put my Instagram in um, the description below. And you can always at me in if you've done any shots and you want to share them. And we'll, we'll share them on Instagram. I might even put a hashtag in there. But keep an eye on the description below. And I'll think of a hashtag or something. And if you want to share what you've produced, put it in there. Anyway, as always, thank you again for watching. Please do remember if you got value from the video, click to like, subscribe and click the bell for notifications and I'll see you all as soon as I can in the next video. Bye.